Greetings everyone and welcome to Brevard Zoo's Rainforest Revealed. This will be our first expedition in a series of videos covering Latin American themed zoo exhibits that we will fully explore over the course of this coming summer and fall. Future parts of this series will include Jacksonville Zoo's Range of the Jaguar, Palm Beach Zoo's Tropics of the Americas, Houston Zoo's South American Pantanal, Cedric County Zoo's South American Aviary, as well as my personal favorite exhibit in the United States, Zoo Miami's Amazon and Beyond, featuring the Village Plaza, Cloud Forest, Islands in the Sky, Amazon Land of the Giants, and Atlantic Forest Spirit of Survival. In these videos, we will get a good look at a wide variety of life that calls this area home. Hopefully, we will learn a few things about the rainforest they live in, the animals themselves, and the impact this region has on us all. We will start this journey by asking ourselves, what is a rainforest? Or more specifically, in this case, what is a tropical rainforest? Well, we know that rainforests can be found on every continent except Antarctica. However, tropical rainforests are mainly found between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. This 3,000 mile band is called the tropics and found in places such as Central and Western Africa, Southeast Asia, islands of the Pacific and Australia, and of course, the ones that currently have our interest residing in Central and South America. A quick answer to this would be that tropical rainforests are full of tall trees, warm climates, and as one would imagine, lots of rain, with some of these forests receiving more than an inch nearly every day. But to understand this better, we will dive a bit deeper throughout this and upcoming treks. In the tropics, sunlight strikes these areas almost straight on, which in turn produces intense solar energy that keeps the temperatures high, right around 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. These high temperatures is what keeps the air warm and wet. On average, the humidity will fall somewhere in the 77 to 88% range, with the average in the Amazon being 88%. With such humid air comes frequent and often extreme rainfall which can range between 80 to 400 inches per year. And because tropical rainforests are so warm, they produce as much as 75% of their own rain through transpiration and evaporation. Rainforests are both weather makers and climate regulators. As air movers, they enhance the rise of warm, moist air, which in turn powers winds that circulate air around the world. Rainforests make rain and are carbon catchers, taking the CO2, from the air as they grow where it's stored as solid carbon compounds in the wood. Rainforest roots and soil hold onto water like a sponge, making them flood defenders. At the same time, water evaporates from leaves having a cooling effect. With this sunlight and plenty of moisture, we have found some of the essential building blocks for tropical rainforest diverse flora and fauna. Nearly half the world's species can be found here. For example, it's estimated that 40 to 100 or more different species of trees are present in each 100 acre section. And here we will find the most biological diverse terrestrial ecosystem on the planet. We will also clear up the question about the difference between a rainforest and a jungle. The main difference is that we will find tropical rainforests have thicker canopies, taller trees, whereas the jungle will have denser vegetation in the understory and more light coming through. A few of these rainforests that should interest us on this journey include the largest of all rainforests in the world, Amazonia, home to some 40,000 plant species, 2.5 million different insects, around 3,000 types of fish, about 1,300 species of birds, and roughly 400 plus species each of reptiles, amphibians, and mammals. Here we will find some of the largest predators of the Latin American tropics, including cougars, anacondas, and the jaguar. Brightly colored birds such as the crimson topaz, scarlet macaws, and toucans fly and squawk through the trees. Scampering and swinging through the branches, we can spot spider and capuchin monkeys or cotton top tamarins. There are lots of life to spot in the estimated 400 billion trees here. In and near the Amazon River and other waterways, pink river dolphins, shovel-nosed tiger catfish, electric eels, and red-bellied piranhas swim. Nearby, we might catch the glimpses of the various species of beautiful but deadly poison dart frogs that warn off predators with their bright colors. Even though this is a place of great beauty, 
It is also a place of grave danger, parasites and disease vectors. Malaria, yellow, and dungy fevers are a threat of being contracted, as well as rabies that is spread by vampire bats that dwell in the forest. Even with these dangers, many of our natural medicines have been discovered here. And of course, not as well known as the Amazon rainforest, the Pantanal is the world's largest wetland. This gigantic seasonal floodplain is home to a variety of plants and wildlife. During the summer rainy season, the rivers overflow their banks and flood the lowlands, forming swamps, marshes, and shallow lakes, leaving behind island-like areas of higher ground. Over 80% of the floodplains are submerged during these rainy seasons. This area is roughly 10 times the size of Florida's Everglades and is home to more than 3,500 species of plants, around 50 species of amphibians, and a little under 100 species of reptiles. During the dry seasons, these rivers withdraw, but the lowlands are only partially drained. The sediments carried by the floods make the Pantanal soil very fertile, which in turn supports the scattered trees, vibrant flowers, and grasses. The Pantanal provides sanctuary for a rich assortment of life. Here we can find the world's largest parrot, the cobalt blue hyacinth macaw, as well as the largest flightless bird in South America, the greater reed. Over 600 species of birds live in this region, including ibises, ducks, and herons. Rare animals spotted here will include the giant anteater, marsh deer, giant otters, and jaguars. Common sites include capuchin monkeys, capybaras, anacondas, caimans, tapirs, and howler monkeys. There are a thousand varieties of butterflies that reside here, as well as hundreds of species of fish. The Santa Elena Cloud Forest Reserve in Costa Rica, commonly referred to as the terrain of the cloud forest, is covered with a lush garden of flowers, mosses, ferns, and ephyolites can be found on almost every tree, which is any plant that grows upon another plant or object merely for physical support and not in a parasitic way. This cloud forest is at an elevation of 5,250 feet. This highland forest has almost 100% humidity year-round and benefits from constant cloud cover, which provides a continual supply of moisture, in turn supporting its vast amount of life. Here we can find jaguars, free-toed sloths, as well as three waddled bellbirds, kill-billed toucans, and quetzals. The Volvidine temperate rainforest, found on the west coast of Chile and Argentina, here we will find four forest ecosystems which include laurel leaf forest, deciduous forest, northern Pantagonian forest, and the Pantagonian Andean forest. Animal life here includes the smallest deer species in the world, the southern pudu, the smallest cat species in South America, the cod cod, and the Montito del Monte, a arboreal marsupial, as well as the Magellanic woodpecker, the largest woodpecker in South America. Some of the oldest species of trees are found here, Alursi trees look like giant sequoias and can live up to 4,000 years, making them the second oldest living organism on Earth. Olivio trees are found on the western slopes of the coastal region and can live to be around 400 years. We can also find the monkey puzzle tree here, a species that is endemic to this area it has existed since dinosaurs roamed the planet. The Bozoas Biosphere Reserve at Nicaragua is a meeting point between the fauna of both South and North America. The biodiversity here is very high. Between 100,000 and 200,000 insects are found here, though that number might be much higher as this area is still mostly unexplored. Wakamayas are a common sight here as well as the largest eagle found in the Americas, the harpy eagle. Pumas and jaguars stalk here feeding upon their favorite prey tapirs. This happens to be the second largest rainforest in the western hemisphere. The scenery consists of hills blanketed in tropical forest vegetation. From dense plants and trees to sudden drop-offs, these are a few reasons why this place remains mainly unexplored. The Monte Verde Forest of Costa Rica is known for its beautiful streams and waterfalls, natural rivers, and medicinal herbs. This forest is located along a mountain range. Over 500 species of orchids grow here which is the largest in the world. Here in this cloud forest, we can find white-faced howler monkeys, ocelots, bellbirds, and many species of hummingbirds. This was once home of the famous golden frog. 
This species spent most of its life underground and is known for its burnt yellow coloring and would only emerge from underground at the end of the dry season to mate. In 1987, scientists noted nearly 1,500 adult toads. In 1988, they spotted 10 males. And in 1989, they spotted only one. And in 1990, none were found. It is believed that fungi caused a fatal disease among the species amphibian and scythid fungus was likely the cause of extinction. These represent some of the world's oldest living ecosystems, with some in their present forms having been around for nearly 70 million years. We now know that they are incredibly complex and diverse and cover roughly 6% of the Earth's surface. They are home to more than half the world's plant and animal species, making rainforests dense with flora and fauna. For example, looking at a four square mile patch of land could contain as many as 1,500 plants, 700 species of trees, 150 species of butterflies, as well as 400 different species of birds. This extremely rich biodiversity is incredibly important not only to our own well-being, but that of the planet as well. These rainforests help us regulate our climate and provide us with everyday product. So how are these tropical rainforests structured? Almost all of them have four layers, and if we start at the top and move down, we will come across the emergent, canopy, understory, and forest floor, each with its own unique characteristics based on the levels of air circulation, water, and sunlight. Though each layer is distinct, they do, however, exist in an interdependent system. So what does that mean? It means that species and processes in one layer will influence and impact those in another. At the emergent layer, we find trees as tall as 200 feet dominating the skyline. Foliage is often sparse on tree trunks, but spreads out wide as these giant trees reach the sunny upper levels and photosynthesize the sun's rays. Small and often waxy leaves help these trees in the emergent layer retain water during long droughts. When it does rain, a single drop falling from this layer can take up to 10 minutes to reach the forest floor due to the densely packed vegetation in the canopy area. These waxy leaves also act as a protection from the hot sun. Strong winds carry away lightweight seeds of the parent plant at this level, which helps with pollination. Temperature and climate fluctuations are common in its highest level. In the Amazon, we find Brazil nut trees and kapok trees in the undisturbed parts of the rainforest. Brazil nut trees can live up to a thousand years. This tree also produces a large fruit that when it falls to the ground can reach speeds of up to 50 miles per hour. Only one known animal could crack open these fruits tough exterior and that is the agouti. The kapok tree is a hardwood evergreen that provides shelter to many of the emergent layer birds and insects. It also produces a bright flower with broad leaves. However, unlike other species of rainforest trees, both of these are deciduous and shed their leaves during the dry season. Animal life moves through the unstable topmost branches of the emergent layer by gliding or flying, and those that can't do either are usually very small and light, in order for them to be supported by the slender uppermost parts of the tree. Animals that we will find here include bats, gliders, butterflies, and birds, as well as predators like the harpy eagle and white-tailed hawk. Both spider monkeys and sloths can live here. Sloths are oftentimes found with moss growing on them as they are very slow movers, and spider monkeys can be seen zipping through the trees at these levels. Macaws can be found nesting in holes high up in the emergent layer, and the smallest bird on earth can be found here as well, the hummingbird. The goliath bird-eating tarantula comes out to hunt during the rainy season, using its venom to paralyze the small animals in the emergent layer. The area beneath this is called the canopy, a deep layer of vegetation that can get to thicknesses of 20 foot. This dense network of branches and leaves forms an umbrella type of overhang and acts as a roof over the two remaining layers. The majority of this is made up of trees, vines, and branches of various sizes. The canopy blocks sunlight. As much as 80% of the light is blocked here. Wind and rainfall are blocked as well, as very little rain gets to the plants in the lower levels. They survive only on what little drips from the leaves and trees. This creates a dark, still, and humid environment below. 
Trees and other plants have adapted to this damp environment by reducing pointed, glossy leaves. These drip tips allow the rain to run off and keep the leaves dry and free of mold. In the canopy, more food is available and more animals live in this area than any other layer in the rainforest. This dense vegetation dulls sound, so many, but not all, canopy dwellers are notable for their shrill or frequent vocalizing. Animals here often need to fly, jump, hop, or glide to get around in between the gaps in the trees. In the Amazon rainforest canopy, fruit is snatched up by the large beaks of screeching scarlet macaws and kill-billed toucans, and picked up by howler monkeys or barking spiders. The silent two-toed sloth chews on the leaves, fruit, and shoots in the canopy. Many thousands of insect species can also be found at this level, from bees to butterflies and borders to beetles. Many of these insects are the principal diet of the canopy's reptiles. Many more animals take shelter in this layer from predators on the floor layer, as well as seek protection here from the strong winds and rainstorms. Here we can find lianas, which are thick climbing vines that attach to trees and grow upwards towards the sunlight. Colorful vegetation, which includes orchids, mosses, ferns, and lichens, grow on the trunks and branches. Cross-pollination is common at this level, with flying animals such as insects, bats, and birds feeding on the plant nectar and delivering it to the pistol of another. Photosynthesis is abundant in the canopy thanks to the overabundance of leaves. When water and carbon dioxide are converted into oxygen at a rapid pace, the result is plentiful flowers and fruits that attract many species of animals that live here. Located several meters below the canopy, the understory is an even darker, stiller, and more humid environment. Plants here, such as palms and philodendrons, are much shorter and have larger leaves than plants that dominate the canopy. Understory plants' large leaves are designed to catch the minimal sunlight reaching beyond the dense canopy. These plants often produce flowers that are large and easy to see, such as the heliconia, native to the Americas and the South Pacific. Others have a strong smell, such as orchids. These features attract pollinators, even in understory's low light conditions. This layer of the rainforest produces many popular house plants, such as the zebra plant, prayer plant, and house ferns. Tree trunks in this layer tend to be thin, as they are usually younger, smaller trees that are growing here. Plants usually do not exceed past 12 feet in height in this layer, and many of the native banana trees are found here as well. Animals call the understory home for a variety of reasons. Many take advantage of the dimly lit environment for camouflage. For example, the spots on the jaguar may be mistaken for leaves or flecks of sunlight, for instance. Tree frogs and salamanders do well in the understory layer as they require a lot of humidity to keep their skin from drying out. Bats, lizards, jaguars, frogs, monkeys, and snakes are common here, with many spending large amounts of their time in the tree branches waiting for prey below or living off a diet of insects. Countless insects can be found here, bullet ants, butterflies, stick insects, and beetles, to name just a few. Often these insects are preyed upon by monitors, geckos, and birds. The darkest of all the rainforest layers is the tropical rainforest floor layer, or forest floor. It lies beneath the emergent canopy and understory layers, which is the reason why almost no sunlight reaches this area. This makes it extremely difficult for plants to grow. This layer holds the key to the proper functioning of the entire rainforest ecosystem. Because of this dark and moist conditions, plants, leaves, and animals that fall or perish decay very quickly. Decomposers thrive on the forest floor. Here we find termites, scorpions, worms, and slugs. Organic matter falls from trees and plants, and these organisms break down to decaying material into nutrients. The shallow roots of rainforest trees absorb these nutrients, and dozens of predators consume the decomposers. The soil of most tropical rainforests contains few nutrients. The rich diversity in the canopy and quick decomposition from fungi and bacteria prevent the accumulation of nutrient-rich humus. Nutrients are confined to the rainforest's thin layer of topsoil. For this reason, most of the towering trees in tropical rainforests have very shallow, widespread root systems called buttress roots. 
Animals such as wild pigs, anteaters, and armadillos forage into decomposing brush from these tasty insects, fruits and tubers of the South American rainforest. Even large predators, including jaguars, stalk in the darkness to surprise their prey. Smaller rodents, such as rats and lowland pacas, hide from predators beneath the shallow roots of trees that dominate the canopy in emergent layers. These animals are the largest in the rainforest, and we find both herbivores and carnivores calling home here. But we will also find army ants, known for moving in colonies to attack and eat anything they come in contact with. Rivers that run through some of these tropical rainforests create unusual freshwater habitats on the forest floor. One of these is the Amazon River, which is the second largest river in the world and is home to more than 3,000 species of fish. But each year more are added to that list. Anacondas can be found in the basin's shallow water. We can also catch glimpses of the Amazon manatee, Amazon river dolphin, giant otters, and black caimans, as well as 20 freshwater species of stingrays, which are very closely related to those that are found in the Pacific Ocean. The Amazon river has the largest drainage system in the world. It is estimated that around one-fifth of all the water that runs on Earth's surface is carried by the Amazon River. During the dry season, the width of the Amazon River can average between two to six miles, and in wet season, that width can reach up to 30 miles. The Amazon is a massive, intricate water system weaving through one of the most vital and complex ecosystems in the world. And this will conclude our first look at Latin America rainforest. So in summary, we have learned what a rainforest is, the unique areas that these animals call home, as well as the structure system of said rainforest. Thank you for joining me on this trek through Rainforest Revealed. This is Brad. I will see you where our adventures take us next. Until next time, safe travels, everyone.